How is data received? We're going to look at an overview of a digital communications receiver. There's a video on the channel that talks about transmitting data. And if you haven't seen that, look in the details below this video. You'll find the link. What we have to do in the receiver is, of course, detect digital signals. Of course, we have to do the decoding. We call this channel decoding to overcome any errors from the channel. And we need to do source decoding to receive our original uncompressed signal. And these processes mirror the processes that are done at the transmitter mentioned in that other video I was talking about. But what about the other boxes here that I haven't filled in? And in fact, there are other things we have to do even before the detector. Let's think about these. Well, the first thing that you need to do is to amplify your signal because it will have been transmitted from some distance away. And if it's come over a copper wire, it will have been attenuated by the wire. If it's come through the air, it will have radiated in lots of different directions and your antenna will only have picked it up in the direction that you are receiving it in. So the first thing you need to do is amplify the signal. Then we need to bandpass filter the signal. Let's think about that for a minute. Well, let's look in the frequency domain and think about our signal that we're receiving. So we're either getting a low pass signal over that wire that I was mentioning, perhaps a twisted pair wire, such as in digital subscriber lines, or it's going to be in a band pass region at a carrier frequency, such as in Wi-Fi and mobile cellular. And so we're going to need a band pass filter to filter out all of the other signals in all of the other parts of the spectrum, which are not part of your signal of interest. So what about the two boxes here between the bandpass filter and our detector, where we're detecting back the zeros and ones. Well, let's think about what our signal is and remind ourselves of the three most basic types of signals that we are using to transmit digital data. One of them is called amplitude shift keying, where you're simply changing between two different amplitude levels and that is the waveform that you're using to transmit a digital one and a digital zero. If it was optical fiber, for example, if the channel was an optical fiber channel, you might have used on-off keying, OOK, where you're sending light at the frequency of light when you're doing digital one, and you're not sending anything for a digital zero. And if it's wireless channels, the most basic form is binary phase shift keying, where you're sending a signal of one phase to represent a one, and then the opposite phase to represent a zero. And now we've got to think about how we convert these waveforms back into ones and zeros at the output of our detector. So the first thing we need to do is to collect up energy from our signals over the period over which we're sending those bits. So if this period is capital T, for example, then we need to collect up that energy and integrate that energy over that time period before we make our detection. And in order to do that collection of energy or integrate of energy, we have something which we call a matched filter. So the matched filter has an impulse response which matches to the waveform that we're using to send. So for example, in the wireless case, we would have an impulse response which is matched to this waveform with this phase. And then at the output of that filter, we need to sample it at the time period, capital T, and then 2T and 3T and so on. And if it was this waveform I've shown here, then the output here would be positive for the first time period because it is matched to that. The output would be negative for the second time period because it, because it is the negative match. And then go would go back to being a positive for the next time period because it is a positive match again. So this is what we call a matched filter. There's more details about this you can find in the link below this video. So at the output of our match filter, we need to do a time sample. And we're going to sample at multiples of the symbol period, capital T. And then the output from those samples goes into a detector, which maps those actual samples back to the constellation as to whether, in this case, in binary case, whether it was a one or a zero. And the output from the detector is the binary ones and zeros. So before we go on to the rest of the processes, 
let's think about what we need to do in order to actually implement these. Are there other functions that we also need to do? And in fact, there are. In order to do the match filter here, we need to have our filter exactly aligned at the same frequency as the waveform that's coming to us at this exact carrier frequency. So for the match filter, we also need to do something called frequency locking. So frequency locking is required because the crystal oscillator in your receiver may not be oscillating at exactly the same frequency as the one that was used in the transmitter. And so it's important to tune the frequency to match those frequencies and make sure that your match filter is in fact exactly matched to the transmit waveform. What about these samples? We also need to think about finding the exact time to do those samples. We, we need to look at the waveform that's coming in and work it out for ourselves because there's no geniated system that is going to tell us when to do those samples. So we need here a clock synchronization process. And this is called clock acquisition. And this takes the output from the matched filter and uses it to find the exact times in which the symbols transition from one symbol to the next and feeds that in to this switch. That then produces the output that the detector uses to map to the constellation points. So is there anything that we need to think about to make sure that this is done correctly? And of course, there is. We need to know if the constellation is scaled correctly. To, to work that out, we need to have channel estimation. And this is most often done by making use of training data. So in the data stream, there will be known data transmitted, and then that known data can be used to estimate the unknown channel. That then in turn can be used to scale the constellation and get accurate detection. So what's this next box? Well, this only works, the detector, if there is no inter-symbol interference. But if the channel has caused these symbols to spread into each other, then you need to undo that effect. So after the detector, there will be something that we call an equalizer. And the equalizer undoes the effect of the intersymbol interference in the channel. For more details on this, again, check the links below this video. So the next process then is to decode those data bits and to try to correct any errors that might have happened. Of course, in order to do this, we need to find where the start of our blocks are. Often, channel encoding is done on a block basis. But even if it's a convolutional encoder, you also still need to find where the start of the sequence is. So we will need here block detection. So after channel decoding, in theory, we should have our error-free sequence, but things are never ideal. So often, we have another process called auto-repeat request. And this has its own parity, generally over a longer block length. And if that is not met, then at this point, it requests an entire retransmission of the signal from the transmitter. So it has a feedback path, so it can tell the transmitter that it needs to retransmit the signal. And if the ARQ is happy, then it sends the data to the source decoder which does the decompression or conversion back to a speech signal, for example, if the data actually came from a speech signal or whatever the source of the data was. So if this video has helped you, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Check out the description below. You'll find a link to a web page with a full listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.